Koto. Uh, I'm Prudence Walker, your facilitator for the Q&A this evening. Before we hand uh, begin, I'd like to hand over to Peter Allen for Karakia. Peter is Tangata Whakaha Māori member of the Better Outcome Partnership. It's great for Peter to be able to join me and you for the corridor this evening, Peter. Hi, uh, Paul Māori e Prudence, uh, kia ora, kia ahoi. Uh, ko tēnei tumihi aroha ki a koutou e ngā tangata o tātou nei motu haramai i tēnei pō ki te whakarongo ki a tātou nei tumuaki ko Pola. Nō reira ko tēnei te tēmihi uh, mō tēnei. Nō reira uh, ko taita te timata mō tātou nei hui o tēnei pō uh, te karakia. Ara whakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga, kia mākina kina ki uta, kia mātaro tara ki tai. E hiaki ana te atakura, he teo. He hoka, he ho hu, ti hei maudi ora. So just a, a short mihi and welcome to everybody for joining us here tonight so that we can listen to um, uh, our Chief Executive Officer, our Tumuaki of, uh, of Whaikaha, Paula. And uh, uh, just a short karakia that says, uh, you know, uh, uh, cease the winds from the west and cease the winds from the south. Uh, let the wind blow over the oceans, let the wind blow over the land and let the day dawn uh, with a glorious day. Uh, so we'll hand it back to you now, uh, Prudence, for your, for your housekeeping. Kia ora. Kia ora, Peter. Uh, as I began, I'm Prudence, and I'll be facilitating this session this evening with Paula. Uh, I'm a feminine presenting pale skin person in my early 40s with a well-rounded face and body <laughs> who currently has faded pink um, shoulder length hair Tonight, I'm wearing a purple T-shirt. I have identified as a disabled person for the last 25 years, and prior to my current role as Chief Executive of the Disabled Persons Assembly of New Zealand, I worked for a disability service provider for 11 years. I have facilitated many conversations in and around disability over the last 15 years, and my sign name is Prudence, which portrays beads around my neck, or I'm also referred to in New Zealand Sign Language as Pink, not to be confused with the singer. Um, I'll briefly go through what to expect in this session um, and how to get your questions in when we get to that point. Um, so just to let you know that this Zoom meeting is recorded for people who cannot be here today. Uh, if you'd wish to turn your camera off, please do so. Um, and that's up to you. Um, if you would also prefer not to have your audio captured uh, you, or it's easier for you in terms of accessibility, you are welcome to put your comments and questions in the chat box. We have a large group today, um, so that's great. Your microphones will be automatically muted until we get to the question time where you'll be able to unmute once I invite you to ask your question. Um, you can also uh, indicate, if that's difficult for you to do, uh, we will get the, the moderator to do that for you. Uh, we're looking forward to the comments and questions, and you'll be able to do that in two ways when we get to that point. Uh, you, If you would like to ask a question verbally, please click on the reactions button on your Zoom toolbar and click raise hand. Um, I know that some people are not able to use that. Um, so if you'd like to ask your question verbally, you are able to raise your hand physically, although it might take a bit longer for me to scroll through and see all the people. And of course, the other way is that you can pop a question into the chat. So we've got people looking at that and we will um, get through as many questions as we're able to today. Just for a, a start to get you thinking about the questions, please try and keep your questions to uh, general questions for Faikaha rather than individual questions around individual support. Um, although if any of those are raised, we will let you know how to be, best get those addressed. If we don't get to all of the questions today, which I suspect we might not, um, please keep writing your questions in the chat, which will be open 15 minutes 
after the session ends. Uh, and those questions will be collated or, or grouped um, into themes, and those will be answered on the Fakaha website in the coming weeks. Uh, we're looking forward to those questions, uh, and shortly I will introduce Paula, the new Chief Executive of Fakaha, the Ministry of Disabled People, who will share her initial impressions from the brief time that she's been in the role. We'll then have the Q&A session um, for a bit of discussion and a chance to reflect together on where we've been over the year um, and to support Paula in thinking about what will be important for Whaikaha moving forward to the new year. Uh, first though, I'd like to go back to Peter Allen to talk a little bit about partnership. Hi, uh, kia ora noa. thank you Prudence. Um, I told everybody, um, Horua Henning and Manga or Makaretu Tawa for Arako Tata Hitamarai Kongati Kahamanu Kitamati, uh, Te Iwi, uh, Hetana Tamata Rihuaho, for Peter Allen Aho, uh, Tinakoto, Tinakoto, no my hara my hara my iti neku. I told everybody, so uh, my name is uh, Peter Allen and I um, come from uh, Hawke's Bay, but I'm currently living in Palmerston North and um, I'm a, a vision impaired person. Uh, and uh, for my audio description, uh, I'm a, uh, a fair-skinned uh, Māori with white hair and standing at about 5 foot 11 at around about uh, 185 uh, pounds. And uh, tonight I'm wearing my uh, black uh, polo shirt sitting in my lounge here in Palmerston North and, uh, and coming to you uh, all out there today. Uh, one of my roles that I'm here is with is, uh, as Prudence has said, is uh, a community member working alongside our Tumuaki, our Chief Executive Officer Paula um, Tesorero, and uh, we also work alongside the, the senior leadership team. And it's designed so that we can have community participation or partnership uh, with our senior leadership team here at Faikaha. So uh, having community members engaged in this process and working alongside our team, uh, that's a, a good innovation that we're looking to introduce. And so, again, that's uh, one of the changes and one of the uh, ways that we would like to, to move forward. And so, yes, definitely we have a good, strong uh, community team working with them at the moment. Uh, and they have a lot of representation from many of the uh, organisations and the networks throughout the, uh, throughout the country as well. And... Um, so that's just a, a quick overview because um, the true star of tonight we want to hand over to is Paula. So, uh, back to you again, Prudence. Kia ora. Uh, kia ora, Peter. And now I'd like to invite Paula Tesreo, the Chief Executive of Faikaha, the Ministry of Disabled People, to speak. As I'm sure you're aware, prior to taking up this role, Paula was the Disability Rights Commissioner, where she was able to uh, speak on and commission work to support our rights as disabled people and those rights being upheld. Like many of you, I've appreciated the opportunity to support and work with Paula on many of the issues and barriers we face as disabled people. Uh, some of you have heard me comment that having Paula in this role gives me hope of what the future holds for disabled people in Aotearoa. She certainly has a big job to do, and I know that you'll have many questions for her, which we will do our best to get through today. Please join me and welcome Paula. Inga mana, inga re, Ko Paul Tisiriro toko ingoa, ko Taku Turangi Mahi, he Timuaki mo Faikaha, the Ministry of Disabled People. Uh, Talo Falava, Kiorana, warm Pacific greetings. Uh, Norera, Tena Koto, Tena Koto, Tena Koto, Katoa. Uh, my name is Paul Tisiriro, and it's been lovely seeing. Uh, people join tonight's Zoom and recognising many of those names and faces. For those who are not able to see me, I am sitting in front of a purple uh, lift up banner that has uh, the words Faikaha on it, Ministry of Disabled People, and I'm sitting at a table, I'm wearing a white top with black spots, uh, dangly silver earrings, and I have short 
background here. Uh, my sign name is, uh, I've got two fists that are motioning the riding of a bike and that was gifted to me by Def Aotearoa is my sign name. Uh, thank you to Peter and Prudence, uh, Namihi Kiakwe Matua Peter for opening us uh, with our karakia and um, introducing our session this evening. And Prudence, thank you for supporting this conversation tonight. I want to thank everyone, especially those from our disability community, Fano supporters of all of this work for joining us tonight. I hope this will be the first of many sessions like this that we have where we can share updates. I can hear directly from you about what's top of mind, what's concerning, and get your uh, guidance and thoughts. A number of you have already made time to meet me and share your experiences and hopes and frustrations. I want to acknowledge your generosity in sharing what can often be very personal stories and also for your patience as we work through the transition to the establishment of Faikaha and face the challenges ahead of us. So for those who don't know me, I am a disabled person and I'm really honoured to be the first chief executive of Faikaha and the first disabled uh, chief executive across the public service. I took up the role on the 1st of September and so while I'm very much looking forward to our questions and answers, there might be some that I can't answer but I'd like to hear them anyway so that as Prudence said we can respond and put the answers on our website. In the initial establishment phase we have been consolidating the existing disability related functions that came across from the old Ministry of Health and also from the Ministry of Social Development. Having transitioned into Waikaha, we're now starting to look at the future shape of our leadership and our organisation so that we can meet the aspirations of our community. Our aspirations are really clear. We are here to lead. We will drive better outcomes for all disabled people in partnership with community and others. We'll lead policy, transform the way that disability supports are provided and progress transformation of the whole disability system. We have two really big levers to help create this change. The first is that we are now responsible for disability support services and the changes that we know we need to make to serve the community better. We also have a role which is referred to as the system steward, which recognises our role as leaders and experts in government about disability. And we will do that through our own strategic policy, but also influencing other government agencies by commenting on their policies, programs and services, and also through the budget process. We are not responsible for things like housing, education, transport. Those things remain with the relevant agency, but we are now in a much stronger position to influence them than we have been in the past because of the establishment of Faikaha. To be successful, we as an organisation need our community to feel you have a stake in and are able to see yourselves reflected in the makeup of who we are and who we partner with. We must and will become the leading example across government for the public sector in employing disabled people and in empowering our community. We will grow 
our workforce of disabled people with the skills and courage to bring together the values of our community and the responsibilities of the government system. It's going to take time to make all of these changes. We are at the start of something new. We are still building our organization, recruiting to roles, but I know that you, you will help us, uh, support us and hold us to account. I will open shortly for questions, but it would be remiss of me to not acknowledge the things that I already know about our sector and some of the things that since coming into this new role you've shared with me and I want to give you a sense of what we're doing about them. I've heard from many families that you're tired, that COVID on top of a housing and now cost of living pressure have put more pressures on disabled people and Fano, and through much of that time respite and other supports have been less available rather than more. I know and have heard that many people are looking to the future and wondering what will happen when it's more challenging for families to play the role that you do in the life of your disabled Fano member. That uncertainty on top of the fatigue of previous years, I know has left a number of families and disabled people wondering about the sustainability of things. We have introduced additional flexibility and carer support and individualized funding and removed restrictions on who can pay family members. I've heard that that flexibility helps, but I've also heard that it could be more easy to use. And too often where the system requires more information, it doesn't meet the basic expectations of a mana enhancing engagement. Likewise, changes to paying family members have helped, but we haven't got all of the settings right yet. I absolutely expect my team who are committed to engage with you on those issues and that providing greater facilitation and clarity for those who are grappling with the system is a priority. I've also heard from families, disabled people, providers about the workforce shortages and about the difficulty in finding support and sustaining that support. At a time when we are seeking to expand choice and control, workforce constraints are increasingly limited the op limiting the options available to all of us. I recognize that. I acknowledge there's not a simple solution to that, but I also know my team are looking to make meaningful progress <laughs> through a workforce strategy and some medium, short-term and long-term options around that. I've heard of the deep dissatisfaction with the limited living options available for our community and a deep fear of what options that might be taken away exist. The recent UN review of our progress to implement the UN conventions on the rights of persons with disabilities has been really clear. The report told New Zealand that we must make progress on broadening the options that disabled people have to live in, in particular, must shift away from a reliance on institutional or facility-based options to be considered to live up to Article 19 of the Convention. My team are preparing the start of a substantial response to the UN recommendations, as well as the emerging findings of the Royal Commission of Inquiry into the Abuse in State Care. And I expect to be speaking with you more about those things in the new year. I've also heard that many of you in relation to the enabling good lives approach, that it's an option that many feel is only available to some and that that needs to grow. We're currently working on what that EGL plan will look like so that next year, more people will have more flexible options. I'm really aware of the expectations that all of this places on a new ministry and on me as our chief executive. 
I thought very carefully about taking this role, stepping from my previous role where I was advocating for change alongside many of you for our community. And I deliberately took this role as an opportunity to think about how I can help lead and support change. So my commitment is to make that sustained change that we know we need, that reduces complexity, prioritizes the embedding of disability rights as fundamental rights within our system and within our community. We are going to have to work right across government, across local government, with our community partners, with all of you to deliver on our aspirations. It is early days for us, but we are a really ambitious organization. We're recruiting, so please make sure you do keep a lookout on the website for roles and for ways to be involved in our important work. We're putting in place the various policies and processes that all organizations need. And at the same time, we're getting ready to implement change next year. So thank you for your ongoing work, for your advocacy, for your tireless work in our community. I'm really looking forward to together genuinely transforming and changing opportunities for our community. And I feel very lucky to be in this role surrounded by a great team. I know that you'll have many questions and I look forward to exploring them with you. As I mentioned, I'll try and answer what I can tonight, but for me, the most important thing was connecting with you and giving you a sense of where we're at, what's coming up, and I look forward to more of these engagements. So I'm going to throw back to Prudence. Nā mihi nui, kia koutou katoa. Oh, kia ora, Paula. Thank you for sharing those initial thoughts with us. Um, we we certainly want to see uh, Whakaha, the Ministry of Disabled People, drive better outcomes for all disabled people um, and in the long sort long of, sort of transformation of the disability of the system. Sorry, I was just getting a bit of feedback in my own voice there, which is a little off-putting, but it's all sorted. Um, and I'm sure that we would all appreciate um, some of that reduction of complexity um, of, you know, just trying to live our lives. Um, I'd certainly support, um, you know, what Paula said around the fact that Fakaha, the Ministry of Disabled People, are recruiting um, and would encourage anyone who thinks that they have any of the skills needed to uh, be working for the ministry um, to really be putting yourself forward for consideration for any roles that interest you. Um, I'm all for supporting uh, the advancement and employment for disabled people, whatever that looks like for individuals. So it's now time for the Q&A session. Um, Please keep your questions focused around Whaikaha broadly, um, as Paula won't be able to answer any personal questions around support. Um, and as I mentioned, I don't suppose that we'll probably have time for all the questions that people want to ask, but uh, these will be collated and uh, themed and answered in the uh, on the Whaikaha website over the coming weeks. If you'd like to verbally ask a question, please raise your electronic hand if you can, uh, or your physical hand if you're not able to do that. Um, and of course, you can also type your questions in the chat and people are looking out for those and feeding them to me. Uh, Okay, so I know that a number of hands have gone up already, uh, and I think the first one to go up was for Ken, I'm guessing is the name, um, just showing on the screen, Ken, R-I-C-M. Hi, that, sorry, that's just um, my surname. It's Melanie Kenrick here. Um, thank you very much for your presentation, Paula. And um, you certainly touched on some of the issues, particularly the workforce issue, which I know is um, 
um, sort of involved with an organisation which is providing support for people with disabilities, and that certainly is probably one of the, the top issues. Um, wearing a different hat in terms of my involvement with council, you mentioned that you're going to have a major role in terms of advocacy towards some of the, the public policies. What do you see sort of a ma major role in terms of your advocacy and um, trying to promote change within councils? Because it's actually councils which are delivering a lot of the, I guess, on the ground services that people are are needing and actually see and are, are really important. So how, how do you see the ministry's sort of, I guess, relationship with local councils? Thanks, Melanie. Um, and, and thanks for your comment about workforce, which I can come back to after, and I'm sure there'll be other questions on that. But in relation to local government, you know, we're really clear that um, you know, we have a, a role to play in really stewarding change across government and we'll be you know, focused on government agencies in the very short term. But we have a, you know, you're, you're absolutely right that, you know, really we're you know, a lot of the barriers that our community face are actually at that very local level. And so we know also that there's a greater opportunity for local government and central government to be working much more closely connected. So, you know, I see our role as really trying to influence and support local council to, to do better. So we'll be growing that, what I referred to before as our stewardship function, and absolutely, we will be working to, I guess, better connect those relationships across mm -hmm. um, and with local government than, than there has been an opportunity uh, for us to do in the past. Do you potentially see that there's some um, potential for government funding to flow through to local governments in terms of, I guess, improving some of the outcomes or and um, maybe service provision that can that maybe local government could provide? I think Melanie there's huge opportunities as we think about our approach to enabling good lives in the future uh, about you know enabling good lives all about you know community driven um, leadership and responses and so um, I do see an opportunity for uh, local government, um, if you know, uh, driven by community, to um, provide a broader range of choices and supports for disabled people. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm sure there's many more questions, so I'll leave it there. Thank you, though. Yeah. Well. Um, I've got a question here that's come in on the chat, um, that, Paula, that says there is central government funding for programs and projects in the community. Is this ministry likely to release any funding to the public for community, uh, for projects slash programs? Thanks for that question. The short answer is yes. Um, I don't know if that question had specific programs and things in, in mind because I, I can't see the question, but absolutely, um, we will be making funding available for strengthening um, the voice mechanisms for disabled people and also uh, as we think about uh, broadening the Enabling Good Lives approach next year, um, uh, um, we absolutely will be looking to invest in greater community, uh, so disabled people and Fano um, capability and capacity building um, within the community. Hilda, thanks for that. Um, probably expanding on that somewhat, partly to do with that. Um, Jonathan asks, how will Faikaha live up to its obligations under, under Article 4.3 in General Comment 7 of the Convention? Absolutely. So, um, kia ora, Jonathan. Thank you for that question. Uh, so, look, I'm really determined that our agency absolutely um, uh, lives up um, to those obligations. In terms of how we've got um, our 
some partnering arrangements that Peter touched on um, earlier, um, but we'll also be working to um, embed our partnership approaches next year with disabled people uh, and families. And so we'll, we'll um, strengthen our partnership relationships that way. But also we've got a really big opportunity in that role of stewarding change across government where we are talking with agencies about the expectations around involving disabled people um, through their representative organisations. Um, in service design, the development of, of policies, and, you know, helping to facilitate those exchanges. So, you know, I, I hope that through investing in uh, community across the country, through our stewardship role, that actually we will, we will be mobilising our community to have many more um, voices at, at the table. And monitoring. So, Jonathan, I didn't touch, sorry, on the monitoring um, aspect of that. I guess, you know, as an as a agency, uh, we will expect to be monitored and to be held to account for what it is that uh, we deliver. And that's why I'm really, um, I guess, pleased that we have an opportunity to uh, lead the response to the recommendations made by the UN earlier this year and we've got a really great platform for change you know we've got the harrowing stories that came through the Royal Commission of Inquiry to abuse and state care we've got the Waitangi Tribunal co-papa inquiries we've got the UN recommendations the establishment of Faikaha you know we're, we're at a at a moment in time where uh, I, I hope we can leverage those um, be held to account for our role in um, responding to them Kia ora, Paula. Um, I know there's a lot of hands up on the screen. I'm going to ask one more question from the chat before I go back to those for the moment. Um, Colleen Herbert from CCS Disability Action says, He pātai tāku, uh, what is Faikaha's position on the paper released by the UN on deinstitutionalization in the context of the way forward within Aotearoa? Now, I know you spoke a little bit about institutionalization, but I just wanted, I wondered if you wanted to expand on that any in response to this question. Yeah, thank you um, for that question. I think the thing I'd say at the moment is that um, it's our absolute um, uh, aspiration to, or intention, intention to increase the range of ways in which disabled people um, receive supports. And, you know, we know through the Enabling Good Lives um, protocols and demonstrations that with greater support, in the community and with more flexible funding arrangements, that that has meant that some people who may have um, otherwise been in receipt of residential care are now living in community and better thriving in community. So I think, you know, we've, we, we know that with the right support, um, disabled people can, can live, a, live a good life. So that's what we're committed to delivering on. Kia ora, Paula. Um, now, Trish McQueen has a verbal question for you. Paula, <laughs> Have the other, and my question for you is: Therapy for disability adults who need to have ongoing therapy, not myself, and not the other have to not but to have a proper and. Um, Assistant on our disabilities. And the other question is Will you make sure people like my 
itself it captures every need. Um, so your question, Trish, was around on people who require ongoing therapies and around counselling. Is that right? Yes, sorry. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Kia ora, Trish. Thank you. Nice to, nice to see you again. Uh, I'm not sure I have a very clear answer to that um, to that question, other than I would anticipate as part of um, the way in which we work with Te Whatu Ora, um, who's one of the entities that have um, uh, been created through the health reforms, that we'll raise with them um, the importance of that. So I've just made a note. Um, it's not something that sits exactly with us, but, but we will raise with Te Whatu Ora. And we'll put some information um, because I haven't uh, answered that in full here. We'll answer it on the website. And the other question, because developed disabled people are funny living on the money from work and income. Will you be able to get some more money in the ovens so we're not as struggling to get to live on limited money? So your question is around benefits, is it? And, and it not being enough to live on? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Trish, thank you for raising that. And, you know, um, it's an absolute issue I'm really aware of. And, you know, particularly at the moment, you know, post-COVID, the cost of living issues, housing issues, it's a real pressure for our um, community. And, uh, again, as part of, that role of stewarding change across government. Um, we have raised and we will raise again with our Ministry of Social Development colleagues, um, the issues that are coming through the community. And that that is absolutely one um, that I, I hear. And uh, we will certainly raise those points uh, with our colleagues. And that will be able to um, come and meet with you personally and talk to you or not for that. Yeah, yes, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Trish. And I think the other, um, the other point around income is just from, I am also acutely aware of the income thresholds um that you know when our when our community um earn above a particular amount the impact that that can then have on other supports from government and again that's something that we've we've um raised with other um agencies and just on your last point about engaging with the community absolutely uh you know that is where i I get the greatest feedback is out and about engaging with the community. So I'm um, very keen to keep doing that, Trish. Thank you. Kia ora, Trish. Um, Denise Astle has a verbal question for you, Paula. Kia ora, Paula. Good to see Hello. you. Um, now, I mean, none of this will be a surprise to you, but so for those that weren't eligible under uh, Ministry of Health, um, to get DSS uh, because they weren't on the list um, of ones of things that you know get the supports. So now with Faikaha, will those who um, come under the social model um, of disability be able to get the supports that they hugely need? Yeah, kia ora Denise, thank you, um, and absolutely. 
um, very aware that there are more people than the approximately 52,000 people that we support who um, need access to disability support services. The budget that we have at the moment covers the people that we're currently committed to um, providing supports to and uh, we are absolutely you know committed to um, looking at having those conversations with relevant ministers about um, eligibility more broadly because it's it's very much an issue I'm, I'm yeah, acutely aware of. Yeah, no, I appreciate that because um, also we have the issue of you don't fit under like now it's to fit a aura, but and don't fit under um, uh, yeah. Fakaha, um, but you sorry, why can't, um, you sort of fall into this area there is a grey area and there's a lot of rare disorders who are in that area. So uh, uh, like where would you suggest that people who fit who don't fit somewhere how can they approach? Would this be something that um, the ministry would be looking at? Yeah, absolutely, Denise. I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, there's no wrong door for government or there shouldn't be a wrong door. And so, um, you know, if it's, if it, I, I welcome that discussion here and we can join people up to the various um, new health entities and where different responsibilities lie. So it would be concerning to me if our community felt that as a result of any reforms and things that people sort of didn't know where to go. So feel free to use our contact at faikaha.gwt.nz email um, and really happy to facilitate some of those conversations, Denise, absolutely. Kia ora, Paula. Um, on a um, somewhat similar but slightly different note, Kelly asks, will there be any work around mental health and getting this under the Faikaha umbrella instead of the Ministry of Health? Yeah, good point, Kelly. I'm, I'll have to come back to you with a more substantive response on our website, if, if that's okay. Um, very acutely aware of... Um, you know, people experiencing psychosocial um, distress and um, I identify as disabled people. So there's, you know, very much work that, you know, very much things that we are doing to work with the Ministry of Health and Te Whatu Ora around some of the mental health reforms and um, changes to mental health legislation. So we absolutely have a role in, in trying to um, influence that. Kia ora. Um, Tonya asks, do you anticipate changes to legislation that will require investment by local governments and businesses around accessibility? Uh, so people may be aware of the accessibility legislation that is before Parliament at the moment. Um, it's just been through its select committee stages and that will be um, reported back to parliament as to what the select committee have heard and recommend so i know many people in our community are really looking forward to um you know he hearing uh, how that legislation uh, is ultimately shaped and you know the the rationale behind that legislation is to find a way to start reducing the many barriers that disabled people and our families um, experience. And, you know, those barriers are right across New Zealand. They are across government, they're across um, private sector, local government. And, you know, the, the, we've got an opportunity to, to really start to turn that around. And it's important that we do that. Kia ora. Um... I've got a question here that says, are you recruiting parents with lived experience and where can they fit into Fakaha? Uh, absolutely. So, you know, I'm really committed to growing a workforce here at Fakaha that uh, absolutely 
um, brings people into the organization who, who are disabled. So we grow a disabled workforce uh, and also other people who have lived experience, be that through Fano, through caring um, for disabled people. Uh, and, and, you know, we, and we of course have um, allies and champions who might not be disabled working with us. And I think one of the things that, you know, I'm also really committed to doing and have started conversations uh, with other chief executives about across government is, you know, Faikaha is one place to build that workforce expertise, but actually we want to build that expertise right across government. And we want to make the experience of working inside central government much, much better for disabled people. And we've now got um, some improved data around the experience of disabled people in the public service and we want to build on that and um, uh, grow that workforce but you know my, my approach to this is absolutely Fano members um, should apply for jobs at Paikaha we, we welcome um, those applications and more broadly uh, in addition to the potential for working in Faikaha you know, I've already in this role spoken to a number of uh, family and whānau networks, and I'll continue to do that because I absolutely need to hear and understand what's happening for family and whānau um, more broadly. Kia ora, Paula. Um, we haven't got too much longer to run on this, so we have time for probably two more questions. So, Grant, you are next in line um, for the verbal questions, so I invite you to ask Paula your question. Uh, kia ora, Paula. Kia ora, Prudence, and kia ora to the uh, gentleman who led the karakia. Uh, thank you all for uh, facilitating this discussion tonight. Um, my question, Paula, is... Um, I'm a disability advocate here in Tauranga Moana, and my question is that one of the common themes I've heard um, from people on the ground is uh, having a, a one-stop shop for uh, all things disability, all the services, supports, and information that people need. Is that something that Whaikaha will um, evolve into or uh, develop along the way? Uh, kia ora, Grant. Thank you for that question. Um, and nice to see that beautiful backdrop <laughs> on your on your screen of uh, Mount Monganui. Um, so the, the the short answer is yes. My hope will be, or my expectation will be, that Faikaha is the exemplar in terms of the provision of information that people can come to us um, in that with that one-stop shop sense of where to find information um, on disability. It's going to take us a little while to build that um, because we're building our comms team and, and building that capability, uh, but yes, in time, because I think that, you know, something I, I've you know heard and experienced myself um, is just, there's a lot of information in a lot of different places it's not all accessible and there is an opportunity I think with the establishment of our agency um, to look at, at things like that so thank you for um, for that suggestion awesome thank you Paula Kia ora. um I think uh, Gabriel Hogg has a question hey Paula Nice to see you. I have two questions, please. The patient is using AAC. I guess my first question follows on from Janice. Will Ministry of Disabled People in Capacity of Disability Support Services look at extending their eligibility criteria for other neurodiverse people beyond the scope of autism for those that don't have another co-occurring condition? 
and will more funding be provided to talk linked us to enable disabled neurodiverse people to reduce wait lists in order to access earlier access to assistive technology and augmentative and alternative communication. Sure. Gabby, thank you for that question. And it's nice to see you again too. So a couple of questions in, in there. Um, the question about eligibility more broadly um, is, is something we're going to have to grapple with um, as we think about that chart, that mandate that we've got around transforming um, the system. And so, so absolutely. The question about um, talk link. Uh, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head, but we'll put some information on the website um, about that. And interestingly, um, the issue of greater access to assistive technologies um, and augmented technologies is something that I'm, I'm definitely hearing quite a bit of in this role. So thank you for raising it. Kia ora, thank you for that, Paula. Um, now, I know that there has been quite a few questions uh, in the chat, and some of those have been answered by chat, for, but for those ones who haven't, um, they will be collated into themes and answered on um, the website in the coming weeks. Um, and Yang, I know that you had some there related to business. Um, so I think the email address has been posted for you to direct that to. Um, I'm just aware, Sarah, you're the only other one who had the electronic hand up. So if I can just invite you um, in the last few minutes we have to ask your question to Paula, um, then we have all the others written down. Awesome, kia koto. Uh, my name is Sarah and I'm the founder of the Facebook group. Uh, collectively, um, I'm here on behalf of 29 other New Zealanders with lived experiences of disabilities, um, a very multicultural group. Uh, and one of the main things from the group um, was around the disconnect uh, with disability advocacy and representation um, in hospitals. Um, our disability community, um, including myself, uh, I am uh, someone that has multiple uh, disabilities, but there's a real disconnect between the care that we receive in hospital um, and then the aftercare with GPs. What is the role of Faikaha in terms of educating uh, medical practitioners, clinics and hospitals um, in terms of how to navigate um, with dis, uh, with people that have disabilities, um, because that is predominantly one of the main issues that a lot of us in the group that I am um, managing uh, have. Um, and it's more around education and in hospitals, like I can get a cultural advocate, but it's very, very difficult to have representation in hospitals in terms of having a disability advocate. Um, or uh, having G uh, inequalities across GPs where um, a GP may be able to talk about disability support services and then another patient and their GP, um, like there was no conversation around um, a needs assessment. So what is the role in terms of um, educating the healthcare sector on what we need? Um, because it's really important that our GPs have that education um, and they're prompting us as patients around the support services that we may be eligible for, as well as hospitals. Thank you. Kia ora, Sarah. Kia ora, Sarah. Um, thank you for that question. A few points. Uh, one, I'd love to learn more about your group. Um, so it would be great to get an email from you with um, a way to um, make that connection. Uh, so, so thank you for that firstly, um, and for all the work that going to support people. Secondly, um, uh, I've done a, a couple of recent media, uh, media interviews, actually long form interviews. Um, one specifically uh, focused on GPs as an audience, 
and was able to talk about some of the things that have come through the New Zealand Health Survey and things which absolutely reflect some of the things that you are um, that you have you have raised and so I talked about the um, the things that GPS can do to better support uh, our community of disabled people and families so that that's not the you know <laughs> the sole answer but just just so that you know that it's it's very much a, an area I recognize um, the other Absolutely, there is a role for us to connect with Te Whatu Ora around making sure there is some consistency in the provision of information um, with primary health providers around making sure that they do know about access to disability supports. Um, so thank you for, for raising that. The general is issue around support in hospital yeah, again, um, in our, we do, you know, to answer your question about what role do we have, yes, we have a role in, you know, f feeding that information um, and working with uh, Te Whatu Ora um, and Te Akawhai Ora um, in, in the provision of, of those um, supports. So short answer is, yes, we do have a role, um, but also um, want to link other agencies and get them to you know, to do their thing but I'd really yeah welcome uh, contact from your group Sarah so I'll, I'll leave that in your in your hands to make uh, contact Prudence if, if that uh, thank you Sarah um, I do just want to acknowledge that you know there's over a couple of hundred people on this call tonight which is great um, and you know to me as a disabled person and, and deliberately coming into this role to try and affect change, it's absolutely visceral to me. It is core to, to me that we achieve the things that we have been set up to achieve. And, you know, it won't all happen overnight. It won't all happen, you know, next year. Um, some of it might not happen the year after. Um, but I am absolutely committed to leading change for our um, community and their families. And I absolutely, absolutely acknowledge the pressure the whole system is under. And, you know, we've got a, a really big mandate to affect change. We've got some money on contingency to help support um, taking an enabling good lives approach um, uh, through, you know, things like personal budgets and connectors and investing in community to grow its capability and capacity. And we need to start delivering that next year. And um, that's what we're committed to doing. So really want to thank you. And also a big thank you um, from me, um, Prudence, to you uh, for all your incredible work uh, and commitment to our community and for, for this tonight and to uh, Matua Peter for your, um, always for your uh, wisdom and, and guidance um, and, and cloaking us with the right cultural um, awareness and, and to our interpreters. So, so thank you and I'll, I'll hand back to you, um, Prudence. Kia ora, Paula. Thank you for that. And um, thank you to everybody who had a question or submitted a question. Uh, I apologise that we didn't get to all of them, um, but do want to reiterate that those will be grouped if there's common themes and addressed on the Faikaha website in a couple of in the next couple of weeks. Um, and Paula will, as she said, continue to um, want to engage in further kōrero and have further thoughts and questions. So as we mentioned, uh, we this Zoom will remain open for about 15 minutes just to allow if anyone has any last questions that they want to post in the chat for those to be captured so that they can be answered um, later on. So I hope uh, that this 
start of uh, what I hope is a continuing conversation, and I know it will be, um, was helpful for you. It's great to see so many people here today. Um, and I think we've heard from Paula that there is an acknowledgement of how much work there really is to do, but a real commitment to that as well. So thank you again for your suggestions and views. And I'd like to hand over to Peter to lead us in a closing karakia. Hi, uh, kia ora, Prudence. Um, uh, ko tēnei te, te mihi mutunga uh, mō uh, tātou nei hui o te nei pō. Uh, me tuatahi ki a koe e pōla, um, e, he nui te mihi ki a koe mō te nei kōrero i te nei pō. Uh, te me uh, tuarua ki a koutau i ngā tangata i ngā whānau i ngā uh, rangatira, rau rangatira mā mō tō koutau a whakāro, mō tō koutau pātai mō te nei pō. Uh, ngā pātai nui mō, tā, mō tēnei. Nō reira, uh, he mihi, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kia ora nō koutou katoa. Uh, there's a, a, a Māori whakatauki that I just want to finish with tonight before we do karaki, and it is e hara taku toa he toa taka tahi, e ngari he toa taka tini. And that's a, 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 a whakatauki or a proverb that relates to, you know, the strength of a collective. And that's what um, Paula spoke to uh, quite often tonight, and that's our whole disabled community, whether it is disabled people, whānau, providers, there's a whole lot of us that are in this together, and um, so a big mihi to you all, and, and it's that collaboration that we are searching for. Ai, ko tai te mutunga, uh, tātou whakakapi, uh, kia whakairia te tapu, kia wāte ai te ara, tūruki whakataha ai, kia tūruki whakataha ai, haumie, puie, so the veil of sacredness from this particular hui tonight has now been lifted so that we can all continue in our lives for the rest of the night. Ai, kia ora koutou. Kia ora.